Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a 3D scan of this uh, plastic fairing. It's about 40 centimeters long. So uh, after I made a 3D scan, I will reverse it in CAD, split it into two parts so that my printer can print this. And then I will join it with a mechanical joint. make a joint here in the middle because if I make a joint somewhere here it will crash with anything I think Okay, let's take a look at the part here the part is made from a PP polypropylene 1.6 or 2 millimeters thick the fairing is attached to the main body of the scooter uh, by using uh, clips so uh, the clip is aligned in a different plane. So when I reverse in CAD, I'm going to create each plane for the clips so that I can model the clips uh, accurately. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There are seven contact points, which is, um, and all of these are not in the same plane. The only way to reverse this is by using a 3D scanner. You can't use uh, photographs or um, vernier caliper to find the alignment of the fixing point. And there's all, only two uh, mounting holes here. One is here and another one is here. So I will concentrate on the clips. Uh, it has to be perfectly aligned with the 3D scan. If you look here, there's scratch mark scratched with the other part from the vibration uh, this part is uh, 50 centimeters long so my printer k1 max can print um, up to 30 centimeters so i need to split the part into two uh, pieces and i will uh, make a joint here behind this clip i make a mechanical joint because the, this part is very thin and you can't use adhesive to glue it so i use a mechanical joint for this part okay let's start with the 3d scanning and the 3d scanner that i will use for today project is the Creality scan uh, laptop x you can use laptop pro uh, for making uh, this uh, 3d scan as well uh, for the laptop original it uh, might be a bit difficult because part like this i will uh, attach the markers directly onto the object and I need to scan it in a different angle to get all the surface and the detection range of the laptop original is quite a closer to the object and it be a bit more difficult for uh, making a 3D scan a part like this which is, I will show you in a minute so um, uh, first I will apply the markers onto the object First, you need to try to put uh, the larger markers, the 6 millimeters, as much as you can. And in a small and curved area, and you can place the additional uh, 3mm markers. Profile of this fairing looks like a C channel, so you may need to uh, twist it in a different angle. So you need to put uh, more markers on the side as well. When you do a global marker function, you need to turn uh, from one side to the other while making a marker scanning. You should be able to find an angle where the scanner can see at least four markers from one side and also another four on the other side. So if I turn this into here, it will see some marker. It will see some marker here, right? And it should be able to see the markers here as well so that I can turn from one side uh, to the other. So this, is, will be, uh, this will be my transition angle. I will turn from this side into this side and it will see um, the marker from both sides. So when I turn, okay, it should be able to see at least four marker from this side and also a four on this side. I add it a little bit more here. This side has a small uh, radius, so I use a small marker. Don't place the marker too close to the edge. Have some defects when you remove it. Okay, this should be enough. Okay, let's start the scanning. 
Okay, I have already connected the laptop X to the PC. I use 0.3mm for the resolution. Okay, and then I will start with the global marker scanning. I will adjust the brightness. Okay, I'm flipping to the other side. So I will um, slowly turn. Now it should be able to see um, the markers on the other side. So it's very good for uh, making a 3D scan of the thin part like this. Because if you make two scans for the front and the back and merge it, you wouldn't be able to merge it with the software because it has no overlapping area for the sidewall. The software wouldn't have anything to uh, when you merge it. So the only way to make a 3D scan of this part is by using a single scan and use the global marker function. I will start with the 34 lines. Look like the brightness is okay. So I will start the scan. If you use a spray, it will pick up the surface quicker. But I'm not going to use a spray because um, it's going to be a big mess if I use a spray. Okay, let's take a look at the result here. All the markers removed. It leaves some marking, but that would be okay for doing a reverse engineering. Some uh, deep pocket cannot be scanned. I can tell that not every scanner can scan this part. Okay, let's uh, mesh it. I mesh it to 830,000 faces. Okay, meshing doesn't take long time. Because I'm gonna use it for reversing, so I will export this uh, in the ASC format. Let's save it.
I have two build plates for the K1 Max, the one with the smooth PI sheet and the one with the texture. I find that to print the ABS with a good adhesion, I prefer smooth one and use the glue stick. I will apply a fresh glue stick. So every time after printing, I will watch it and reapply the glue. It will give a best adhesion for the ABS. And the glue that I use, it has to be PVP glue. You can't use any glue stick, it has to be PVP. Okay, now it's ready for printing. Okay, so here's in the creative slicer. Uh, the printing time is 3 hours with the ABS. Okay, let's send it for printing. Okay, here's a 3D print part. It's the third part. I didn't break anything because uh, this part, the support, is quite easy to remove. It print uh, this way up and the clips turn into this direction so I can easily remove the support. Uh, under the clips, everything uh, looks quite okay. A little bit of a wavy line on the walls. And the second part, also print in this uh, direction. I use the butt joint. This is the butt joint uh, for joining these two pieces together so that I can have a larger contact area with, with the print bed so it will get a good adhesion. Uh, this part is perfect. But this part, I broke two things. One is the clip here, it's broken. And the second one is here. I broke it while uh, removing the support from this and from this. I mean, if I'm gentle, if I'm more gentle when I remove the support, I might not break it. Uh, it's one and a half hour for one piece for printing. So I would just uh, try to uh, put this onto the scooter, see how well it will fit. For that, I will use this um, pin to join the, this um, two parts together. Uh, so I will align it like this. Just place it in like so. So now we have a mechanical joint installed. I don't make a joints here because there could be something 
on the main body of the scooter that will interfere with this uh, if I make some extrusion here so just uh, press fitting with hands like so but if you want to uh, permanently use uh, this kind of joint I recommend that you put some adhesive into this um, pin so it will not uh, remove itself while you're using it okay it's done with the original part this original this one is 3D print so here Let's uh, put this into the scooter and see how it looks. So I might break some more clips when I install this. Say when I lost some clips, it still look okay, I think. See here, you can't even see the joints.